Hey, how's it going everyone? This is I Am Error, and I'm back with another tutorial on Unity. And in this video, I'll be going over how we can set up one-way platforms similar to how they're set up in the action platformer Dead Cells. One of the things that makes great 2D action platformers like Dead Cells so addictive is the way these games have very tight and responsive controls. But exactly how do you get games to have tight and responsive controls as opposed to floaty non-responsive controls? Unfortunately, the answer is not very simple, but what it really comes down to is having very solid and creative code with multiple conditional checks for every type of input. So to help illustrate what I'm talking about, let's take a look at all the different things that Dead Cells does when it handles one-way platforms, take notes on how the player can interact and go through them, while also ensuring that any other game object that needs collision with that one-way platform doesn't pass through it with the player, and then of course let's discuss the logic needed to have those features implemented into your project. Before we continue with this video, some of the scripts that I've used to come up with this solution have already been discussed in previous videos. The GitHub repository will contain the updated versions of those scripts that I discussed in previous videos. A link to the repositories in the description of this video, but you don't have to follow my previous videos to implement this solution into your project. So if you want to use your own horizontal movement and jump scripts, I'll touch base on what logic you'll need to add to your own scripts in order to make sure that everything works. And if you need more help implementing the logic into your own scripts, feel free to leave a comment in this video. However, if you do want to follow my previous videos in order to have the exact same solution as I present in this video, in the description of this video, there's a link to my playlist that goes over all those previous episodes in order, but the main videos you'll probably want to focus on are the Total Jump Solution video, as well as the How to Climb Ledges video. Now we definitely have a lot to cover in this video, so let's go ahead and get started. Before we go over any scripts or game design, let's first do a quick playtest of Dead Cells, and take some very quick notes on how they implement the one-way platforms in that game. The first thing we want to do is make sure that the player can jump up through a one-way platform when they're standing below it, and then of course fall through that one-way platform when they're standing on top of it. These are pretty standard one-way platform features, but Dead Cell specifically has a really cool downward jump, where if the character is not in a grounded state and you jump downwards, it propels the player down to the ground faster, and then pass through the next one-way platform beneath them right when they perform that downward jump. If you just fell from a platform and perform a downward jump, it'll have the player collide with the platform directly beneath them, but if you wait a small amount of time after falling through a one-way platform, then it'll go ahead and have the player automatically pass through the one-way platform beneath them. Last, if there's a ledge for a one-way platform and the player collides with that ledge, it has the player automatically climb on top of that ledge. Now, of course, you may not want all the features that Dead Cells offers for one-way platforms in your project. So as I go over the code for this video, I'll first discuss how to implement the more basic features of a one-way platform, and then build up to the more complicated features that are more specific to a game like Dead Cells. So let me just recap the features in order that I'll be going over for this video. First, we want to have the player be able to pass through a one-way platform when they're jumping up from beneath it. Next, I'll go over how we can have the player fall through a one-way platform if they're standing on top of it and the correct input is pressed. Then I'll start discussing the more specific features, like having the player fall through the next one-way platform beneath them if they're performing a downward jump. And then last, have the player be able to grab the ledge of the platform if they're facing it while they're jumping up. Now, if you're looking for the more basic features of just having the player go up and down through the one-way platform, the logic I discussed to include this feature into your project should be very easy to implement if you haven't followed any of my previous tutorials. But having the more specific features like falling through a platform automatically or grabbing onto a ledge will be a lot more difficult to implement into your own project if you're not using my scripts. So to get started on everything, first you're going to want to create a script for one-way platforms. I went ahead and just called my script one-way platform, and we'll just focus on that script for now, so let's go ahead and open that up. The first line of code I want to go over is above the class itself. I added this line of code require component type of box collider 2D. What this does is it'll just simply add a box collider 2D component to whatever game object you add this script to, if that game object doesn't already have a box collider 2D. I'll next go over the different variables I have set up for this script. The first two variables will set up an enum, which will control how the player can pass through a one-way platform. To the best of my knowledge, all the one-way platforms in Dead Cells can go ahead and have the player pass through either way going up or down. So this is more of a bonus that you can customize with your project. The going up one-way platform type will only allow the player to pass through a one-way platform when they're beneath the one-way platform. The going down one-way platform type will only allow the player to fall through the one-way platform when they're standing on top of it. And the both one-way platform type will of course allow the player to do both. As you can see, when I set up the one-way platform type, I automatically set it as both. But of course, you can change this in the inspector window if you want to customize your one-way platforms. 
Next, I have a private float variable named delay that has a default value of 0.5f, and this value will represent how long the collisions on the platform should be turned off to allow the player to pass through them. Next, I have a private collider 2D variable type that's going to be a reference to the box collider for the platform. Next, I have a private game object variable that'll go ahead and represent the player in the scene. And then last, I have a private collider 2D variable named player collider, which of course will represent the collider type on the player. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the methods. First, we'll be running the start method, so we can cache all the reference values that we'll need for this script to run. The first thing I reference is the collider on the one-way platform itself. Next, I have this commented outline of code, which will establish what game object in the scene is to player based on a tag reference. I comment this line of code out because it's not the most optimal way to find the player, but it's the easiest to plug into any project. The more optimal way would be to reference a script that's only on the player. So I have my optimal way down here. If your player doesn't have a specific script for them, then I would recommend you use the commented outline of code. But if your player has something specific like a character script, I would recommend you choose the more optimal way. And if the character script in your project isn't named character, just change the type reference to whatever your character script is called. And then last within the start method, we go ahead and establish whatever collider 2D type is on the player itself. Next, I run an on collision enter 2D method. The on collision enter 2D method is going to handle all the logic to allow the player to pass through the platform when they're jumping up from beneath the platform. And the first thing the on collision enter 2D method is going to do is make sure that whatever game object is colliding with the one way platform is the player that we already established in the start method. If the player is colliding with the one way platform, the next thing this method is going to do is check to see if the bottom part of the player collider is below the center of the one way platform collider and then also check to see if the one-way platform type is not going down. Then at this point, the logic runs to allow the player to pass through the platform. This first line of code here will set it up so that the collider on the player and the platform ignore each other. This line of code is what's allowing the player to pass freely through the platform collider while still allowing any other game object that needs collision with the one-way platform to have collisions with it. Next, I set this new bool in my jump script passing through platform to true. This bool will make sure that the player doesn't enter the grounded state when they're falling through a one-way platform and allow the correct animations to play for falling. Depending on how you define the grounded state in your project you may not need this bool but keep it in for now and test it out later. And if you have another script other than your jump script controlling the grounded state reference that script instead. The last thing we do on the on collision enter 2D method is run a coroutine and this coroutine will just basically turn on the collisions for the one way platform and the player. I'll be discussing the coroutine in more detail later this video. Next in my one way platform I run an on collision stay 2D method and just like the on collision enter 2D method the first thing the on collision stay 2D method is going to do is double check to see whatever game object is colliding with the one way platform is in fact the player then it's going to run a little bit more specific logic to allow the player to fall through the one way platform when they're standing on top of it. The first thing it's going to check for is input. I've established the input detection through the jump script. Normally I have all my input detection through one input manager script, but I'm using a beginner friendly solution that I've already uploaded to YouTube. But basically what I'm trying to say here is whatever script you plan on referencing jump input through, go ahead and reference that here. And what this down jump press bool is checking for is within the input manager if your vertical axis is in a negative direction and the jump button is pressed, then this down jump press bool will be true for those moments. I'll show you how I set the input up in my jump script later this video. Next, this if statement is going to check to see if the bottom part of the player collider is above the center part of the one-way platform collider, which of course means that the player is on top of the one-way platform. And then last, it checks to see if the one-way platform type is not going up. If all those conditions are met, it runs the exact same code that I've already discussed in the on collision enter 2D method. Now let's take a look at the stop ignoring coroutine. This coroutine will first wait in the amount of delay, which is already set up as half a second, but you can change that in the inspector if you want. Next, we run this method that we've seen before in the on collision enter and on collision stay 2D methods, but instead of setting it to true, we set it to false, so it goes ahead and turns the collisions back on between the one way platform and the player. The last thing the coroutine will do is set the passing through platform bool back to false, which will allow the player to enter the grounded state again. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how to move horizontally through a one-way platform when you're jumping up through them. This part is going to be pretty specific to my solution, so to avoid wasting anybody's time who's not using my scripts, I'm going to go ahead and explain this next part as quickly as I possibly can, mainly because the code I'm showing you has been discussed in a previous YouTube tutorial. So first I'm going to open up my character script. In my character script, I've added a new variable. This is a protected game object variable that I named current platform. And I set the value of the current platform game object variable in the collision check method here in the character script. 
I'll go ahead and scroll down to the collision check method. Just to quickly explain what this method is doing, is this method will go ahead and get run by child scripts and determine if the player is colliding with a certain layer in a certain direction. Because this method was explained in detail in a previous YouTube tutorial, that's all I'm going to say about it. You can pause the video here and copy this method if you want to borrow it for your project. I call this method in both my horizontal movement and jump scripts. So if you're not using some sort of character script, you'll probably want to add it to those scripts in your solution. But what I've added to this method for this tutorial is to assign the current platform as whatever game object makes this method return true. And then set current platform to null when this method returns false. Next, I'm going to show you the logic that I've added to my horizontal movement script. The logic that I've added to my horizontal movement script is in the speed modifier method, which right now in my solution only prevents the player from getting stuck on a platform if they're both jumping towards and moving towards that platform. So what we want to do in this method is make sure if current platform has a one-way platform script attached to it, and the one-way platform type is not going down, then return out of the method there. If you want to learn more about my character and horizontal movement scripts, go ahead and watch my total jump solution tutorial. There's a link in the description of this video, but next I'll show you my jump script so we can finish up basic one-way platforms. The two variables that I've already discussed in my one-way platform script are these two top hide and inspector public bool variables, passing through platform and down jump pressed. But there's a third variable that you'll need to add to your project to have this solution working for you, because the on collision stay 2D method doesn't handle input detection very well. So I also made this private flow input delay method, which will help control turning the down jump press bool back to false, so that the on collision stay 2D method in the one way platform scripts can have better input detections. Go ahead and add these three variables into either your jump script or whatever script would make the most sense for your project. I've cleaned up my update method to have all the input in a separate check for input method, so let's take a look at that. And for now, all I'm going to discuss is how I set up input for the down jump press bool. The way I check for this input is first to see if the input.getAxis vertical value is less than zero. And if you're not familiar with the input.getAxis vertical value, let me show you the input manager in the project settings for Unity. The vertical tab is already opened up here, and as you can see, it has all the different positive and negative values that make up the vertical axis. The negative buttons for the vertical axis are both down and S. Unity also defines this differently if you're using different types of joysticks, but for every joystick I've used it's always the left analog stick, and while we're looking at the project settings input manager, the vertical axis default value for gravity is too low in my opinion. I'd recommend bumping it up to 10 to get better results but the gravity is going to represent how quickly the input value goes back to zero when it's no longer being pressed. So if you're looking to have more responsive controls, you definitely want to increase this value. Let me go back to the jump script now. So if the vertical value is less than zero and the jump button is being pressed, which for my solution means you just press the space bar. So if you're holding down a downward direction and press the jump button, it'll first set input delay to zero and then set the down jump press bool to true. It runs this else statement right after that. And this else statement will basically set the down jump press bool to false very quickly. But how it's doing it is it checks to see if input delay is less than 0.02F, which is like a fraction of a second. And as long as input delay is less than that, it'll go ahead and increase input delay by time since last last frame but once input delay is greater than or equal to 0.02F, it'll go ahead and set the down jump press bool back to false. And this very slight delay helps with input detection for the one way platform script and the on collision stay 2D method. I've added some logic in my check for jump method, which is a method in my solution that checks to see if the jump should be allowed when the space bar is pressed. And all I did was make sure that down jump press is set to false as well as downward jumping. I'll be going over the downward jumping bool later, but as long as downward jumping is true, the player will be propelled downwards faster than they can normally fall, and is more of a dead cell specific feature. So if you don't want your player to fall faster when they're performing a downward jump, you can go ahead and remove this conditional check from your if statement. If you do want this feature in your game though, go ahead and leave it in for now and I'll discuss how we can set that up later. But the reason we need to do this is so that the player knows when to perform a downward jump or an upwards jump, and that even if you just want to fall through a one-way platform, it prohibits the player from jumping up when that's going on. The rest of the new logic is going to be found within my ground check method in the jump script, so let me go ahead and scroll down to that real quick. As you probably guessed, the ground check method is going to manage the grounded state for the player, so if you're using your own scripts, go ahead and add this new logic to wherever you're managing the grounded state for your 
secure solution. What I've done to my ground check method is added an if statement to better secure the grounded state to prevent the player from entering the grounded state when they're passing through a one-way platform. This is the if statement that I've added to my ground check method, and then I've encapsulated the rest of the logic in an else statement right beneath it. But what this if statement is doing is making sure that if the player is passing through a one-way platform or the next platform variable is not null, and by the way, this next platform variable is a dead cell specific feature. So if you're looking for more standard one-way platforms, you can go ahead and remove the or conditional check and everything after that from the if statement. But if you are interested in the more dead cell specific features, leave it in and I'll discuss it later. So if either of those statements are true, it keeps the player out of the grounded state. But if the character is not currently passing through a platform and the collision check method returns true that the player is standing on top of a game object that has a platform layer, then we want all the logic for the grounded state to be true. So the correct animations are playing when the character is not only passing through a platform, but when they're grounded again. If you're planning on adding the downward jump, make sure that when your character is in the grounded state again, that downward jumping is set back to false. But if you just want the more basic one-way platform features, you can go ahead and omit this line of code from your solution. All the logic that I've discussed between the one-way platform, character, horizontal movement, and jump scripts will ensure not only that your player can go ahead and pass through one-way platforms in any way, but that the correct animation states are playing while the player is passing through them, as well as have the player move horizontally when they're passing through a one-way platform. The rest of this video is going to go over more features specific to how Dead Cells handles one-way platforms, such as automatically being able to pass through the next one-way platform while performing a downward jump, and grabbing the ledge of a one-way platform. If you want those specific features in your project as well, I'll go ahead and first discuss how we can have the player pass through the next one-way platform automatically when downward jumping, and then I'll discuss how we can have the player grab the ledge of a one-way platform. So let's stay in the jump script for now, and I'm going to go back to the top of my jump script and show you my variables again. There's three new variables that you'll need to add to your jump script if you want the player to be propelled downwards when they're performing a downward jump, and then automatically pass through the next one-way platform beneath them while they're performing that downward jump. The first variable is a serialized field private float downward jumping fall speed, which I set up as a default value of negative 30, and this is going to be the vertical speed in which the player falls at when performing a downward jump. Next, I have another hide and inspector public bool variable named downward jumping, which is going to ensure that the player falls at the downward jumping fall speed until the player is grounded again. This is also how Dead Cells handles downward jumping in that once you enter the downward jumping state, the player is locked into that state until they're grounded again. Last, I have this private Collider 2D variable named Next Platform. This Next Platform is going to be the Collider 2D on the one-way platform directly beneath the player when they're performing a downward jump so that we can automatically turn the collisions off for that one platform, have the player pass through that one-way platform when they're performing that downward jump, but then still enter the grounded state no matter what type of platform they land on next. Before I show you how I set up the input for the downward jumping, you'll need to call a new method within the update method. I've named this new method turn on collision, so name it something similar. I'll talk about this new method later, but first let's go ahead and handle input for the downward jumping. Within my check for input method, the very bottom if statement will handle all the logic to enter the downward jumping state. And the first thing it's doing is checking to see if the character's not in a grounded state. So before you can perform a downward jump, the player has to either be falling, falling through a platform, or already jumping up. And then just like the input for down jump pressed, it's checking to see if the input.getAccess vertical value is less than zero as well as jump is being pressed. If everything is true, then we enter the downward jumping state. Then we run this downward jump method, which I'll show you here very shortly. Next, we check to see if passing through platform is false, so that if a character is already passing through a platform, they'll still be able to collide with whatever platform is beneath them. But if the player is no longer in the passing through platform state, then we do want the ability to pass through the one-way platform beneath the player. Assuming the player is not passing through a platform, then we run the check for platform method, which I'll talk about after going over the downward jump method. So let's scroll down to this downward jump method. And this is a very basic method. All it's doing is double checking to see if the downward jumping bool is true. And if it is, it'll go ahead and set the rigid body velocity y value to the downward jumping fall speed value so that the player falls faster than they normally would if they weren't performing a downward jump. On that note in the falling method, which in my solution limits the player fall speed to a maximum value so they don't fall too fast, we need to encapsulate all the logic in this method inside a new if statement that just checks to see if downward jumping is false so that the player can fall at that new downward jumping speed. Now let's talk about the check for platform below method, so let's scroll down to that. 
And one thing I should mention now is the jump script has a reference to the collider on the player through the character script. In the character script, I have this protected variable named as Cole, and you'll see it here in the next couple methods I discuss. So make sure you have some sort of reference to the player collider in your jump script if you don't already. But how this check for platform below method is working is it's first going to send out a raycast from the bottom center of the player collider, and it's going to check in a downward direction until it hits the next object, and also confirm it's a platform layer. If the result of this raycast has a one-way platform script attached to it, and that one-way platform type is not going up, it'll go ahead and assign the next platform variable, which is a collider 2D variable, as the collider the player needs to ignore when they're performing that downward jump. We then run that physics 2D ignore collision method to have the player in that next platform that the player has not collided with yet, as the two game objects that should ignore collisions with each other. This will ensure that whatever one-way platform is directly beneath the player is the only one-way platform that's affected by this, and regardless of whatever platform is beneath that next platform game object, even if it's another one-way platform, the player will collide with it and then enter the grounded state when they should. Underneath the check for platform below method, I have that method I had you set up in the update method named turn on collision. This method will only perform calculations if next platform is not null. Then it's going to double check to see if the top of the player collider is below the bottom of the next platform collider. And if all of that is true, it's going to turn on the collisions between the player and the next platform game object again, and then set the next platform variable back to null. The last thing I'm going to talk about is what you'll need to add to my ledge locator script that I've made for my ledge climbing solution so that the player can go ahead and grab the ledge of a one-way platform when it's appropriate. But unlike all the other features that I've talked about for this tutorial, this is probably going to require my solution over any other ledge climbing solution. In the description of this video, I've included a link to my ledge climbing solution tutorial. So if you want to add that feature, I would definitely recommend you watch that video to understand how my ledge climbing solution works. But there's barely any new logic that I've added to that solution, so adding this feature to my ledge climbing solution is actually very easy. The only script that's been updated from that solution is the ledge locator script, so let me go ahead and open that up. The first thing I've done is add a reference variable to the jump script on the player, and then I grab that reference through either start or initialization, and really all the new logic is within the check for ledge method. In the very opening if statement for this method, where it checks to see if falling is false, I've added a conditional check to also make sure that downward jumping is false, so the player doesn't grab the ledge as they should be falling through it. And then for both of these long if statements I have in the check for ledge method, I have a similar but opposing check to make sure the backside of the player collider is in front of the backside of the platform collider. I'm highlighting the new logic in both of the if statements right now, but for all other platforms other than one-way platforms, the player won't be able to move horizontally through them, so this new logic won't affect any other platform other than a one-way platform, and all it's doing is making sure that the player is in a correct position for a one-way platform that would be appropriate for the player to grab that ledge. With all the logic discussed, I'll go ahead and play test it really quickly. So let's go back into Unity. Real quick, I want to set up the scene so you know what to look out for, but I have two one-way platforms right on top of each other. These one-way platforms are both set to the both one-way platform type. I also have this testing box game object. This testing box is to prove that only the player will be affected by one-way platforms when they're passing through them, and that all the other game objects that need collisions with the one-way platform won't be affected when the player is passing through them. And everything is already set up, so I'm going to hit play. The first thing I want you to notice is the testing box will go ahead and fall on the first one-way platform. Now I'm going to jump up through both of the one-way platforms. And as you can see, the player passes through both of the one-way platforms and lands on top of them. Next, I'm going to fall through the top one-way platform. And the player falls through the platform but lands on the next one-way platform just like they should. Let me go ahead and jump on top of the top one-way platform again. This time, while I'm still passing through the one-way platform, I'll perform a downward jump. And as you can see, the player still collides with the one-way platform beneath them. But let me jump back on top of the top one-way platform, fall through the one-way platform, and wait for the passing through platform bool to go to false. Now the player actually passes through the bottom one-way platform, because that passing through platform bool was set back to false. Let me do one additional check, and I'll get on top of the top one-way platform again. This time I'm going to jump up, and then do a downward jump. 
And as you can see, the player passes through the top one-way platform, but lands on the bottom one-way platform. As shown in the gameplay footage at the start of this video, this is pretty much exactly like Dead Cells has set up. And also like Dead Cells, the testing box has stayed on top of the one-way platform regardless of how the player has passed through the one-way platforms. I wish I didn't have to mention this about the testing box, but a lot of the other solutions I've seen on YouTube don't actually support having game objects collide with one-way platforms when the player is passing through them. Last, I want to test out the one-way platform types. So I'm going to set the top one-way platform as going up and the bottom one-way platform as going down. I can still jump up through the top one-way platform, but I can't go down past it even if I perform a downward jump. Now I'm going to fall to the bottom of the level and try to jump up through the bottom one-way platform, but the player is not able to jump up through the one-way platform now. However, if I'm standing on top of the one-way platform, I can still fall through it. And if I get on top of it again and perform a downward jump, I can also fall through it that way. Last, I'll show you how the player can grab the one-way platform ledges. So let me set the bottom platform type back to both. And if I jump at the one-way platform and I'm in a good spot to go ahead and grab the ledge, the player will enter the ledge hanging state. And then from here, I can either climb on top of the one-way platform or fall down from it. I know in Dead Cells, you can only climb on top of one-way platforms. You can't actually hang from them. But to me, this is an improvement than what they did in Dead Cells, so I don't want to change this. But as you can see, everything featured in Dead Cells is present within this solution, with just a couple improvements with the one-way platform types and the ledge hanging. All right, that'll go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. If I was able to teach you something new or you enjoyed the content, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider also subscribing. And one last thing before I let you go, I have a course on Udemy that goes over this solution, as well as many other popular features found in Metroidvania games. It's a top rated course on Udemy, and if you're considering making a Metroidvania game, it'll get you in the right direction very quickly. I offer a discount to my course through my website, link in the description to my website. But that's enough self-promotion for one video. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial, but as always, stay safe and take care, y'all.